Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. If you're new here, my name is Angel and apparently we read fan fiction on this channel. It started out as a joke and now here we are starting our second series. If you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. And if you see this stuff on my shirt, no you don't. No you don't. All right, so today we are starting a new series. We are reading Psycho, a Colby Brock fan fiction. Someone left a comment on one of my previous videos about Unchained, a Colby Brock fan fiction. I cannot find that one. So whoever commented it, if you want to send me the link, you can send it to me on Instagram or TikTok um, or just copy and paste it down below. It's probably not gonna show up as a link, but I can at least copy and paste it. So for now, this one has 15 parts, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter one. I can't take it anymore. The asylum closed last night, and I'm still here. Are they coming back for me? Did they forget about me? What do I do? I'm stuck here with nothing. 20 minutes later. I hear a car pull up. It's probably not the guards. I look out my small window to see four guys. I look into the window more, hoping they see me. What's up, guys? It's Sam and Colby. That was a pretty good impression if you ask me, one guy said. He looks mean. And today, we're going to be exploring an abandoned asylum, the skinny one said. <laughs> I have no way out. I'm trapped here with four guys I don't know. A few minutes pass by. I don't know what happened to the guys. They're still outside looking at a camera and talking. I look out the small window and stare at the man with a bun in his hair. He looks weird. He turned his head and I quickly went down. I think he saw me. Guys, guys, I just saw someone move, the man screamed. We haven't even made it inside the place and you're still paranoid, said the guy with black clothing. I think he's emo. I sink back down in my corner and just wait. I hear the guys get ready to go inside and I look back out. This was a big mistake. The emo guy looked back at me and we made eye contact for a good 10 seconds. Also, if you hear me talking weird at any point, I have a temporary crown on one of my teeth and it's bigger than the rest of my teeth for some reason. And I feel like I have like a slight lisp because of it, so I love that. Hi, I said barely above a whisper. Hey, the one guy said, I smile slightly. Help me, I say. The guy looks at me with a worried expression on his face. Guys, guys, someone needs help, come on, hurry, he screams. Everything becomes quiet. I didn't hear them enter, so I thought they left. I go back into my dark corner and start crying. All of a sudden, I hear footsteps coming towards my cell. Hello, is anyone in here? They said to each cell. The guys get to my cell and see me. Oh my God, the one with two different hair colors said. The one with two different hair colors, who's that? Jake, maybe? Are you okay? The emo one said. I keep quiet. Okay, Um. well, my name's Colby. This is Sam, Jake, and Corey. Okay, yeah, the guy with two hair colors is definitely Jake says Colby, pointing to each person. They all either nodded or waved. Colby slowly inched towards me, making me feel comfortable with him. It kind of scared me, so I stayed put. He held his hand out to help me get up, so I got up. What's your name? Colby asked. I'm, ooh, this is a, insert your name here. I don't, I really don't want to use my own name, so we're going to use the name Emma. I'm Emma, I said quietly. Okay, Emma, why are you here by yourself? Asked Sam. I knew I couldn't tell them the truth. I had to lie. My family left me here on purpose for no reason. I guess they were just tired of me. I lied. I hated it. That's terrible. Um, can we take you to our house so you can get cleaned up? Colby said, smoothly and calming. For some reason, I feel safe around him. Okay, I said quietly. He took my hand and led me out to his car. I sat in the front seat with Colby in the driver's seat and the others squished in the back. The drive was about an hour long, so I just decided to fall asleep. Dream. No, leave me alone. Let me go. I scream as they hold me tightly. I had another blackout and ended up getting in a fight. They bring me to a room and strap me to the cold table in a dark room. I got tranquilized. I hate it. I got brought back to my room only to have another guard enter. Just to hurt me. Dream ends. Oh, is this going to be sad? I made sure that none of them had like mature tags on them. So we'll see. I wake up to hands shaking me and telling me to get up. The only thing I do is scream, thinking about what happened in the asylum. Oh, no wonder it's 15 parts. Chapter two. Hey, hey, calm down. It's just me, says Colby, rubbing my back for me to calm down. I relax and look around to see a big house. I look at it in awe. Colby helps me get up and walks me to the house. I hear the guys mumbling to each other, but I don't really care. 
I open the door to a beautiful house. The guys enter behind me and close the door. A dog comes running down the stairs and immediately starts barking. She knows. A small girl came running after the dog. Navi, calm down. She stops and stares at me, face full of confusion and fear. I introduce myself to her and she seems nice. Navi, the dog, continues to growl and lunge at me, but Colby gets in front of me in a protective way. The girl named Devin. Oh, Devin. I miss Devin and Corey. Are they still together? I thought they broke up. The girl named Devin brought me to her room to get me fixed up. I went to her bathroom and took a nice, relaxing hot bath. About 20 minutes later, I get out of the bath to get dressed. I notice that I don't have any clothes with me. Colby, I yelled. Yeah, he answered back. Um, I don't have any clothes. Do you mind if I borrow some? I asked quietly. Yeah, sure, says Colby. He leaves me and comes back with sweatpants and a shirt that says now or never on it. I put the clothes on and go downstairs. The guys were just playing games and chatting. You guys want to go out to eat? Sam asked. Everyone agreed and got ready to go. Chapter 3 We ended up going to Chick-fil-A together. I sat next to Colby and Sam while Jake and Corey sat in front of us. So, Emma, why again were you in the asylum by yourself, if you're okay with us asking, asked Corey. Well, me and my family went out to eat together, and on our way back, they just kicked me out and put me there, I said. I felt terrible for lying to them. Colby looked at me with a weird face. He grabbed my arm and pulled me outside. I winced at the pain from the bruises on my arm. We made it outside, and Colby looked at me dead in the eyes. What was the actual reason you were in the asylum? Tell me the truth. I looked down, slowly starting to tear up. Colby put his finger under my chin and looked at me. He gave me a hug, rubbing my back. Don't cry. It'll be okay. Trust me. Okay, I said, trying to calm myself down. I decided to tell him why I was actually there. The real reason I was there is because, well, I went there last year. They said I was insane and my parents brought me there. I think it was because I kind of had a blackout before I went. It happens a lot out of anger mostly. It also happens randomly. I hate it. I started crying hard. I couldn't help it. Hey, hey, look, it's okay. Trust me. You'll be okay with me, Colby says, hugging me. We talked about it and everything turned out fine. We chose not to tell the roommates until we were ready to. We finished the food and went home. Me and Devin chose to go to the mall so I could get some clothes. When we got home, the house was quiet. Too quiet, to be exact. I walked upstairs to Colby's room. He wasn't inside. I put my stuff down and went to search the house. I made it to the kitchen and heard a loud noise upstairs. I immediately called Colby. Hello? said Colby. Where are you guys? Me and Devin just got home, I said, terrified. Where's Devin? He asked. She just left to do something, I guess. So are we just going to ignore my question? Or I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you, but we went out to film a video. Is everything all right? Colby said in a worried tone. There's noises coming from upstairs. I'm scared, I said, shaking. Okay, um, I'll be on the way soon, okay? He said. I sighed in relief. Okay, I said and hung up the phone. About 20 minutes passed by and I decided to go for a walk. The streets were quiet and I just got mad for no reason. Full anger just built up inside of me. While walking, fist balled up, someone bumped into me. That's when everything went black. I wake up with blood on my hands and a girl crying in front of me, police around me and screaming. Emma, a familiar voice said. I looked and saw Colby running to me, only to be grabbed by police officers to stop him. I immediately feel regret. I hate this. Colby started talking to the police officers and they soon let him pass to get me. I stood up and ran to him, giving him a huge hug. Once things start to settle down, we get into the car. The ride was silent for a good five minutes. What happened? Colby asked bluntly. I can tell he was angry. I blacked out. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, I said, filled with regret. You need to learn how to control it, said Colby, obviously irritated. I can't, okay? It's hard. You don't understand, I yelled. Geez, I'm sorry. Just, uh, forget it, he says, sounding sorry but frustrated. The rest of the ride was silent until we got home. The guys looked at me worried since there was blood everywhere all over me. Colby tells them what happened while I went to take a shower. After the shower, I looked at myself in the mirror. I hate myself. Why am I like this? I can't do this anymore. I stared at the blank wall for a while until I was interrupted by knocking on the door. Yes, I said quietly. Are you okay? I knew it was Colby. No, I said truthfully. Can I come in? Colby asked. I stand up and walk to the door. The door opens. Colby looks at me, knowing that I'm not okay. He tells me to get my clothes on, so I did. He keeps asking me what's wrong, but I ignore it. He decided to leave it alone for the rest of the night and to just relax. The next day. I woke up feeling terrible, feeling mentally drained. I didn't feel like getting up, and even if I tried, I couldn't because my body didn't let me. I look down to see Colby still asleep on the couch. I force my body to get up and walk to the bathroom. I do my morning routine and change into a hoodie and some leggings. 
I walk out to the room and notice I'm the only one awake. I decided to make breakfast for the house, but then realized I forgot. I decided to make breakfast for the house, but then realized I forgot. I don't know what that means. I snuck back upstairs to Colby's room and got my phone. I looked up how to make breakfast since it's only noon so long. That doesn't make any sense either. In the middle of making breakfast, Sam and Colby both come downstairs talking. Good morning, Emma, Colby says in my ear, causing me to jump in fear. Oh my God, Colby, you scared me, I said, holding my heart. Sorry, says Colby, laughing at me. Breakfast is ready, I yell for the whole house to soon come running downstairs. Oh yeah, pancakes, Corey says excitedly. We all laugh at him. Everybody gets their plate and talks about random things. I decided to go to the bathroom to check in with myself mentally. I closed the door to the bathroom and looked at myself, looking at the faded bruises on my body and the old scratches everywhere. Ew, why am I like this? What is happening? I asked myself. I didn't want the house getting confused about why I'm taking so long, so I decided to just leave. Everything was cleaned up and everyone was full and happy. I feel good about myself. I walk into the living room where everyone else was and everyone just started acting weird, mostly when I'm around Colby. The only reason I'm with Colby a lot is because I feel safe with him, I guess, so... Chapter four, Colby's POV. Emma and the rest of the house has been getting along pretty well, and I feel like she's getting more comfortable with us. I don't know how I feel about her. She's awesome, and she just has this thing that I can't explain. I feel happier around her. I think I have feelings for her. Today, I decided to confess my feelings to Emma. I told her to get ready because I have a surprise for her. She agreed. I can't wait. Emma's POV. Colby told me to get ready because he has a surprise for me. I'm kind of scared, but not at the same time. I get dressed in a cute but casual outfit because I'm not a big fan of dresses or anything. Why is this the second story that the girl's not a big fan of dresses? Colby came knocking on my door and asked if I was ready. I said yes, and we went out to the car. On the car ride, we just listened to music, and it seemed like we have the same taste in music. We arrived at the destination, and it was beautiful. I loved it because it wasn't extra. It was just a little pretty spot to hang out with the sunset. This is so cute, I said, shocked he even had the idea of doing this. Thanks, I just wanted to hang out for a while, Colby said nervously. We sit down, facing the sunset. So, what did you want to talk about? I said, staring at the view. I just wanted to tell you something, he said quietly. What did you want to tell me? I was honestly confused. I, uh, I think I, I think I like you, he said. I could tell he was scared. Really? Me? Why me? I was shocked. Why would someone like him like me? Well, you're amazing, beautiful, and I, I just can't explain how much I love you. (laughs) They not like just meet? He says, I was shocked. Colby, I like you too. I know it's weird that a crazy girl like me, he cuts me off with a small kiss on the lips. I started blushing uncontrollably. Emma, will you be my girlfriend? Yes, yes, of course I will. I say, I cannot believe I'm dating Colby Brock. Girl, you didn't even know who Colby Brock was. We give each other long hugs and decided to leave it there. We were both happy with ourselves and decided to tell the house tomorrow. The next day, I wake up to my alarm clock ringing in my ear. It drives me insane. I slam on the clock, causing it to stop. I look up and see Colby on his computer editing a video. Good morning, Emma, Colby happily says. Good morning, I say. How was your sleep? He asks. Something is up. He never does this. It was fine. Are you okay? I said, full with suspicion. Yeah, yeah, I'm great. Why? He said. Is he hiding something? Um, no reason, I said. I decided to go hang out with my old friends and go out to eat. We go to Tender Greens and everything went well. I miss them so much I can't even explain. Only a couple of them were still worried about me. We all soon leave and they drop me off at my house. I look in the driveway and nobody was there but Colby and some other car. I enter the house and see heels on the ground. I knew it. I bolted upstairs and ran to Colby's door. I put my ear to it and hear him and some other girl... I slam open the door to see Colby and some other girl. She had dark brown hair and kind of looked like a man. No offense. At that point, I was full of anger and soon blacked out. I wake up in the arms of Colby telling me to calm down. I looked over to see the one girl on the floor with her elbows bleeding and her nose bleeding. Get off of me, I yell, still angry. Emma, calm down. It's not that serious. It was just a prank, yells Colby. 
Once he said it was a prank, I got really sad. I ran out of the house, blocking out all the words said. I somehow managed to make it to a bus stop. I decided to just go to sleep there and see what happens. I didn't have anything on me because I dropped everything when I entered the house. And that's where we're going to end it today. That was a really quick four chapters. I don't know how I feel about this story. It feels just very like empty. But now that we've started it, I mean, obviously we have to finish it and see what happens. Why was this girl in the insane asylum? Why did Colby think it was okay to prank somebody who blacks out and does crazy things when they get mad? And how did they fall in love after a few days? That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. Don't forget to check out my ebook that is now available on Kindle called Stream Starting Soon by Ashton Ryder, but by me. No one else knows that though. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Make sure and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. That lets me know to keep doing these kind of videos and I will see you in the next one.